There's a really simple pyrotechnic special effect that I use in my videos and this educational video will show you how to do it. It's always good to get your head around really basic and simple in-camera special effects because these are becoming a dying art form. I'll have to throw up this title and I'm going to have to have another chat about sparklers again because I've been shafted once more. This is the biggest anti-climax sparkler I've ever seen. This has to be the biggest fail ever. To create some special effects sparklers, you're going to need these items. Some sparklers, some spray adhesive, if I was you I'd buy a known brand, and some pyrotechnic grade metals. You'll also need a foil tray to apply your metal to the sparklers. You know, I recently did a video and I was speaking about the downsides of the sparklers and how they've changed from years ago. And I think the video pretty well showed some amazing differences in size and quality of effect. And I ended up thinking, wow, I actually found a sparkler brand that was pretty good. But I went and I bought more of that brand and might you see what's inside here. I mean, I'm just getting fed up with buying crap. I really am. And look at this. These look totally different to what I'd purchased prior. And I'm sort of thinking, what is going on here? Is the sparkler market just this wham bam thank you ma'am bunch of people that just supply anything? I mean, this is just really, really giving me the, well, you know the word, I can't say it on YouTube, but I'm really, really pissed off, I tell you. And here's a closer look. This is the brand that back in my sparkler downsize video. I found these at the end of the video. I thought, wow, I've got something half decent. Gone and repurchased those, and I've got these skimpy little things, which look like rubbish. And I've gone through all these boxes here, and it's all the same. Wow, it's really buy beware when you're buying sparklers. And to pull off this effect, you want to try and get sparklers which have a bit of meat on them. I'll be steering clear of skimpy ones. There's the new batch that I got it, and they look horrible. And there's the batch that I bought a couple of weeks ago when I did the sparkler down size. Let's light them up. <laughs> Give me a break. Oh, what is this rubbish? Oh, if ever I wanted to swear on YouTube, it is right now. What is going on here? I mean, this needs further investigation. This is an absolute and utter joke. Well, it looks like we've developed the anti sparkler. The sparkler without a spark. Thank you to whoever's behind this one. I know sparklers are made in India, they're made in China. I'll let you in a secret, I've, I've worked in the fireworks industry for a number of years when I was younger and I've never seen crap like that before in my life. But this is an absolute and utter joke. Hey Leo, if you align a whole bunch of them together you'll get a really big effect. Well, no, you don't. You get a whole bunch of little tiny crappy effects. Like, am I the only person in the world who's noticing that everything's turning to crap? Well, here's some various sizes of pyrotechnic grade titanium. This titanium here is fairly coarse, you'd probably need a larger sparkler, the 18 inch sparklers, to really get it going. But we'll give it a go. I've just got a pencil in there so you can see the size of the grains. And moving on to some finer grades, 3060 there, and 6100. And one thing to remember about pyrotechnic metals is to always keep them dry. And moving up to the finest titanium here, that's 200 mesh. Gives a nice fine white spark. This is how easy it is, get some sparklers, get your spray adhesive and liberally coat your sparklers and that'll get all nice and tacky. Put the metal of your choice into a foil tray, yeah. Then get your sticky spray adhesive covered sparkler, give it a roll in that metal there, making sure it's all covered, give it a tap and it's done. Let's take another look at the action, a bit wider so you can see the whole deal. There's a sparkler going in, I'm rolling it round, I'm giving it a tap, and it's done. Make sure you write a little note of what's on your sparkler. It's really important to do so you don't get confused. There's a batch of sparklers that I've done, and I can apply my note there, so I know what's on those sparklers and what effect they'll give. Okay, let's have a look at some of these. This is 200 mesh titanium, the finest titanium. It is burning, and that's the effect you get to the little sparks falling off that sparkle. And they're not falling very far, so that's the finest of the titanium grades. Quite a big flare coming from the sparkler there. There's a much bigger effect than the sparkler burning all by itself. There she burns away. I think it's increased the burn speed of that sparkler as well, having that titanium there.
The next one is Ferro Titanium, 200 mesh. And I sort of like this one because it's not as bright and severe as the straight titanium. It's got a bit more of a droopy spark. In fact, the sparks are filling up, falling away a fair bit more. You're getting a bit of gold and silver in that spark effect as well. You can see the spark that isn't burning as intensely. And this is the one I use primarily in a lot of the videos that I've made recently when you see falling droopy sparks. I think it's probably the best of the metals for this type of effect. If you're looking for that miniature look of foundry sparks falling and things like that. Ferro titanium. This next one is 60 100 mesh titanium and it's a much fatter spark. It's a spark that's falling away further than the 200 mesh of course. Got quite a nice exploding effect on that spark. Spark was burning away a little bit faster. Got a bit of a crackle to it as well. If you like sound you'll like this one. Uh, it's quite an interesting effect and it's a bigger effect than what we had back on the 200 mesh. Very bright because it's titanium. We're getting to the end now. Next one is 3060 mesh titanium. Almost fatter again. Those sparks are really dropping away and they're fatter than before. That spark was churning away trying to burn that titanium. And what I should do is I'll do another one of these and I'll show you what the sparks do on the ground. Burning away there. These would be falling much further than the spark that previously. Quite pretty. Nice sound coming to the end. I'm going to light up a 3060 mesh titanium. I'll show you how hot those, show you how hot those sparks are. And you can see the sparks landing there on the paper. They're going to start to burn through. And of course, if that was hitting your skin, it would be burning you. So you've got to be really be careful if you're messing around with sparks like this. Any a couple of pinpoint holes through the paper there. The spark is really struggling to burn that titanium, this, this bigger grade. And there's a close look at the burn holes in the paper. And sure, that titanium burns hot. And if that was getting your skin, it would be burning you. And I'm going up to the fattest grade, 2040. A lot of this may not light. You probably need a bigger spark to really get this bigger titanium to be burning. And you see the bits that are burning are falling off. They're big, they're bright, they're hot. And they'll be dropping a long way from the sparkler. It's just not metals you can put on a sparkler. You can put pyrotechnic compositions on as well. And on this one, I put some strobe on this sparkler. And it's changed the characteristic of that gold sparkler to have a strobing effect as well. So a different sound as it strobes away. Go like crazy. But yeah. You could probably use that to simulate an electrical fault. Or just make a gay sparkler, something a bit different. And if I'm looking to increase my effect, I just burn a few more sparklers. And that one was 6100 titanium. Quite spangly. Looks nice, doesn't it? Loud, crackling away. I'll fan out a bit, I'll get a bit more of a spread. There, that's better. Oh, the fun of sparklers and hay can make them look better. Come down to the end now. There we go. And what I always do to manage the hot sparklers once they're burnt is I've got a metal pot that I can put them in when I'm finished. I can put them in there and they don't burn anything else. Because it's best to be safe than sorry. So I just got up the sparklers. Okay, and I'll lift them up. You can see, okay, I've got sparklers there and we've got some nice dripping sparks. And this is hot, this will burn. So if you're doing this, you've got to be really careful. Those sparks will burn through stuff. 
and it gives you some really nice looks like that and I can control the sparks, I can take them away and I can bring them back in you become the boss of the sparks and that's one of the really really simple little special effects things you can do which I think is very safe but you've got to remember that the sparks that fall from it will burn you and then I've got to the end now there I don't tell you I don't teach you anything there you go so there you have it a little trick to do with sparklers it's so much fun as always thanks for watching and bye for now Due to a number of complaints from YouTubers in recent videos, the file reel has been removed from this video. It seems a stupid squeaky voice that sounds like Fred is really, really cheesing people off. So again, it's your time to vote. Do we have the file reel or don't we? It's a topic which is literally tearing my channel apart.